What's up, YouTube? What's cool? What's groovy? What's happening? Welcome back to my channel. It's time for life now. If you are not subscribed yet, I need you to hit bomb, stomp, a on that subscribe button, and make sure you hit that notification bell. Okay, let's get right into this review slash recap because it's a lot. We are in season two, episode twelve, and we're just gonna dive right in. We're gonna talk about Clint and Tracy. Okay, they're the first people that pop up. Okay, Clint is at his parents' house, and you know I love how they roll back the clip where he's on the phone to Tracy, and Tracy's all like, "Divorce is not in my vocabulary." I realize, you know, she's she's just Tracy. I'm never really too sure because it seems like she's saying all these great things to keep him kind of, you know, keep him keep him close, keep him with her. Clint is talking about his parents wanting to cut him off um, if he doesn't stop dealing with Tracy. Now, I looked around the parents' house. First of all, that house looks gorgeous. The house looks beautiful, okay? You can tell they has the money. And <laughs> the mom is like, there's a lot of good looking Christian women out there. <laughs> Why you gotta be messing with Tracy, folk? So, Clint is all sad. Clint's parents basically ask him, what is your deal breaker? At this point, see, for, for, for your common person on the street, somebody going into prison, that's a deal breaker. They do not want to deal with somebody that's going to be a felon. But with these people, obviously it's different because they knew what they were getting themselves into. They were getting themselves into this mess. So they are what seems to be okay with being with a felon, right? So... Obviously, all this stuff is not a deal breaker for Clint. Stealing his stuff is not a deal breaker. Um, going back to jail is obviously not a deal breaker. And then in the confessionals, he's answering whether he would choose Tracy over his parents. And he said he would happily choose Tracy over his parents. So it's very interesting. Tracy has been calling Clint every single day since she went into prison. And I realized that all their phone calls are what they choose to show us because these producers and editors, I'm on to all y'all. They're trying to make things real juicy and I'm not 100% sure that's really what's going down. But anyway, all the calls are basically about reassurance and hope. It's all about, I'll never leave you. I'm always there for you. Even when you come out, I'll be there for you. When you're going through things, I'll be there for you. I'll pay all your legal fees. No, don't talk about divorce. That's not in my vocabulary. It's all about reassurance and hope. And what I realized about all these couples is that every single one of them, their relationship is just like, when they speak to, you know, their, their person in prison, all the conversations are not even really what seems to be, not even really about life stuff, but it's more about giving the person on the inside hope and reassurance that I'm on the outside here waiting for you and vice versa like the person on the inside uh, is also giving the person out like hope I'm not going you know I'm not gonna go crazy once I'm out I'm gonna be with you and you only that kind of thing that's very interesting because you wonder like in an actual relationship that you'd have with people that are in the outside world you know your relationship would would constitute a more and then Trace is on the phone to Clint and she's like I gotta focus on other things going on and you know basically she doesn't have time to deal with like you know his family thinking that she's you know using him for money and all this kind of stuff she has other things to think about than what went on I'm like what and what went on do you mean like when you stole Clint's rental car and his iPhone and a whole bunch of stuff is that what she's talking about just like I have other things to worry about than what went on as if it's like nothing just kind of brushing it aside okay and then it's like I'm looking at 20 years She's looking at 20 years in prison. Okay, at this point, here we go again. Of course, Clint has got to throw the phone because this is <laughs> this is what this guy does when he is distressed. He just throws phones, paying the stupid tax, stupid tax. But anyway, so then she's like, "Well, what? Why did you hang up the phone? Do you want to end it?" And he's like, "No. Do you want to end it?" And they're going like back and forth and he's like, I can tell that you want to end it. And he's like, no, I don't want to end it. But do you want to end it? And he's like, okay, I can tell you want to end it. Bye. And that's it. He goes crazy again. He does more of this <laughs> stuff and he starts banging things and he starts buying a car. By the way, did you notice how many cars were in that driveway? Okay. There were a lot of cars. I was wondering if some of them were of the producers or if some of these cars belonged to the parents. Because their parents, in fact, in the confessionals, you could see like the brick pillars. You know, that house looks hmm, clean. Are you sure you're going to lose all of this? 
anyway so the mom comes out because she's like what what in the world is going on and he's hidden bumping things angry and the mom's like clean honey and she's like he's like she broke up with me now the whole universe all of you are you happy now are you happy my friend does anybody really you know people are just living their life you know nobody really cares you know but then the mom is like um the mom is like oh i'm sure she'll call back just trying to you know you know make him you know comfort him and stuff like that I'm like, why is the mom doing this don't do you want him to be with her or do you not want her to be with her him to be with her because these kind of mixed signals either you're like you should just be like oh it's gonna be okay because she was like i want the you know this marriage to be annulled that's what she said in like a previous clip so i don't know why now seeing her son all kinds of devastated she's like oh yeah i'm sure she'll call back call back for what and to do what and to provide what and to like to do what in this situation the woman is in jail now <laughs> what's even funny is the mom comes out and he's like she broke up with me and she's like who who did and she's like he's like tracy I'm like who else confusion and the last thing that clint says and um, where their segment basically ends is he's like everyone is gonna get what they want except me and i'm like my friend you don't see what you're getting see sometimes getting something is not seeing something physically present in front of you it is the overall picture that you're getting which you can't see so you can't grasp it yet clint but this might be a weight off your shoulder until tracy because you see these two were into each other but until tracy cleans up her act eh, cleans her life up and everything leaves the drug drugs alone leaves the crack alone okay and you're always gonna eh? it's always gonna be this back and forth back and forth so what you get with that is this back and forth, back and forth. Her probably stealing more stuff. You always being miserable, pulling out your hair, all this type of stuff, right? Whereas now, what do you have? You have freedom. You're alone, but you got freedom. You got freedom. You got freedom and peace of mind. That is what you got. But you can't physically see that, so you're not seeing the worth of it. Trust and believe. You will find out. Moving right on along. We come to Brittany and Marcelino. Ooh. Yeah, so they're walking in the supermarket and they come to the baby aisle and Marcelino's like, uh oh. And then they have some very deep conversation um, in one of the aisles and they're basically talking about commitment. And pff, this conversation is way too deep to be having some random supermarket aisle. I mean, I know this is for TV and all that, but couldn't they have found somewhere normal? I'm like, even if it's for TV, you know, if it were me, I would still be kind of, oh, never mind. It's on TV. They're going to see it anyway. <laughs> in that respect, it doesn't actually matter where they have these conversations. It could be anywhere. It could be in the, in the doctor's office. Who cares? Everybody's going to see this on TV anyway. Marcelino seems very worried when Brittany is mentioning, like, commitment. Do you think you'd be able to just stay with me? Blah, blah, blah. Are you very committed? Blah, blah, blah. He's kind of like... Yeah, so that's him. Then they go to Las Vegas for a cute little day. They're walking around, you know, strolling. And then they see this musician and they, they stand still. And, you know, he's doing all this stuff, like a card. And then they, he switches the cards up and then all these magic tricks and stuff like that. Then it's like, imagine you could give Brittany a gift. Any gift at all. Just imagine it. And Marcelino has his hand held up. And the guy does this thing with this cloth. And there is a box the box that we all know it's gotta have some kind of ring in there so yeah he pops the question do you want to marry me and she's like oh my god yes and so they're all cute or whatever I'm like you would have never gotten me with that <laughs> because me magician <laughs> hey never uh -uh. magician psychic forget all of it forget them anyway then um yeah they're very cute but then in one in the confessionals um they're very cute i mean britney's eyes are sparkling she thinks it's so cute and well thought out i don't even know how he arranged all that it's very cute but 
I feel like with this show, you never really know what is the people that are that are <laughs> the people themselves that are coming up with this stuff or whether the producers had a lot to do with it because some of this stuff is just it's just kind of out there. But anyway, very cute nonetheless. Um, they're all happy, and then in the confessionals, Brittany's like, "Yeah, but you know, I'm happy. You know, she's happy. She's not dealing with Amanda anymore. She's just focusing on her little family here, baby on the way. They're moving on to the next stage in life, and she doesn't know how Amanda would fit into this anyway. She's kind of letting that slide, but then she kind of sneaks in a little comment, saying, "Oh, but Amanda did say that you know she would take me back in a heartbeat." Um, yeah, out of all the couples. At first, I was very worried, especially with how Marcelino was acting towards Brittany, uh, Brittany. But I feel like they look. Mm -hmm. The relationship is going somewhere, you know. Slowly, they're getting to know each other. Marcelino kind of seems to relax a little bit, and yeah, you know. On to the next couple, Caitlyn and Matt. We just see Caitlyn with a suitcase, checking, you know, going into a hotel room. Apparently when they left the grief counselor and all of that and Caitlyn went to collect her ashes in the car Matt done kicked her out of the car Imagine after Caitlyn went to pick up her mom's ashes Matt Threw her out of the car that they were driving in I know the grief counselor said he needs to be rewired But this action I don't get I don't get I get that maybe your emotions are a bit uh, or maybe he would not want to talk to her because you know they're a bit angry at each other and stuff but this we don't know what conversations they had in the car and all that that brought this on but you know I feel like on a day such as the day that she was having and she's like ever since Matt came out of prison six weeks ago we've been with his mom and uh, I just need a breather then you hear this is a call from blah 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 to and she is livid. Mm -hmm. She never got that breather. As soon as she sits down in that bed, she gets a phone call with that voice that I'm sure is very annoying to all of them. This is a call from jail. Black collect call. Blah, blah, blah. This thing is like a giant game to these guys, dude. And <coughs> here we go again. Caitlin throws her phone. She has had it. Because unlike Clint, who did not have a deal breaker, she says that her deal breaker were two things. If Matt cheated or if he went back to jail. And he's gone back to jail. What was it? Possession of stolen some kind of vehicle or another. So as soon as he kicked her out of the car, somehow he went and did something that wasn't right. Got arrested. Back in jail. And Caitlin is just there. All miserable in the hotel room. Never got her breather, just sitting there with her thoughts, which is the worst, by the way. And where are Caitlyn's friends, please? Like, is there anybody there? You know, she needs friends around her that she can just call, you know, just like Sarah. Just call her best friend and I can listen to her and hear her out. We're going to get to Sarah in a minute. But anyway, that was pretty much their segment. Moving on to the next. Lizzie and Scott. So apparently, <laughs> we've been. She's been going through all this stuff. Lizzie and Scott have only been together for a week. All the shenanigans that have happened have happened in that one week. It, it's mad. Anyway, so she's like, I don't know, kind of who to choose, my fiance or my daughter that I haven't seen in ten years. I'm like, hmm? okay. She was like, yeah, and you know, she doesn't like you. <laughs> She just says it as plain as that. But you know, we all know it's not really a secret. And then, all of a sudden, hmm, Scott is acting really, really, hmm, very peculiar. Because he's like, you know, I've waited for you all these years. Another year isn't going to matter to me. Lizzie's like, another year for what? What do you mean? Like, he's not really expressing himself. He knows he cannot be with her. And provide for her the way she wants to be provided for it. Truth of the matter is, homegirl is milking him dry. And he is so dry that he, he is he's crispy. And he is so crispy that he is crumbling. Eh? Eh. That is what is happening here. Then they have the sex combo. You know, 
she's like, you're looking at me weird. You're doing weird things with your eyes. You can't really look at me. What's the matter? You want sex? And he's like, no, I don't want sex. And I'm like, <laughs> who is anybody fooling himself? Ah. Also, why are we always seeing Lizzie's bra? I, I don't understand that. But anyway, so, oh, poor man. His teeth. This man's teeth. He's talking with these teeth that look like they were they were like an already prepared set. And you just it, it looks like something you'd ha you just buy from some weird dodgy website and you just get your <laughs> your measuring tape and go uh, measure from here to here. <laughs> just kind of uh, measure your mouth or something because those teeth do not fit this man, this poor man. And they do look kind of nice, you know. You can tell that if they if they fit. It would have been really something, you know, the very white and but my mind is suffering. She's like, why are you always looking down? And then he's like, oh, so I can do it, but you can. Remember like one day or so after prison when they were in that one hotel and they were going to the pool or whatever. And, you know, he was like, are you mad at me? Because you're always looking down. And she was like, what? It's all in your head. In the confessionals. Scott is like, I'm broke. I don't know how many times he said that in these confessionals. I'm scared to tell her that I'm broke. You know, the confessionals actually, like, it's just going in a loop. It's just going round, round, round. He has said it so many times. He's broke. Okay. So, he actually says in his confessionals, I'm tired and I just want to leave. So, this is why I understand now that he said, another year isn't going to matter to me. I've waited this long, blah, blah, blah. Because right now, he is itching to go. He ain't getting the sex. Mm -hmm. He's not getting that. And then he's losing a lot of money. So, yeah, he, he's tired. He's fed up. He, he would like to go. He would actually just like to go and have it be an excuse like, oh, Lizzie wanted to spend more time with Jasmine. So I'm, I'm going. You don't really see him fighting too much to keep her other than just giving her money, which he knows he doesn't have much of. In fact, he knows he doesn't have any off, so this is a ticking time bomb. He says he's just tired of the stress. Then he's like, I'll go. Then she's like, no, I'll go. So she goes. And then when they're standing in the corridor of their hotel situation, you know, the camera crew is ready to do another confessional. Now, she's standing there and she's like, you know, she doesn't understand, half of the time she doesn't understand him. And I'm like, yeah, because my man, first of all, he had a tooth. Then you jumped on him. His tooth almost choked him and then got spat out. So now that tooth is gone. Then now he's got these fake dentures that are way too big and look like something that was made in some arts uh, craft situation. Uh, yeah, maybe that's why. Um, also, she says his eyes are doing something. Now, as he, she's saying all this, I don't know where they thought Scott would be. But Scott just comes walking and he's like, really? Really? My eyes are doing something. The storm's off. And then she walks out after him. And this storming off and people walking after somebody. And you know what? Can't you just stand face to face as uncomfortable as it is and have a conversation? None of these people really seem to do that. So Lizzie's talking about how she wants an emotion and he's angry and riled up. For the first time he's like, rrr, rrr. like for the first time he's like proper mad. He's using his mad person voice. And you can see him actually, yeah, actually it's good to see Scott have an emotion. You know. But sometimes the way Lizzie kind of talks to him, like when he's getting upset, you know, he's never really had a full-on anger emotion like what we saw in that clip when she followed him um, but when she he's kind of expressing himself she's always kind of you know a bit like condescending you know how when sometimes you're telling people something you're like mm, ah, so oh so okay okay yeah I guess That's kind of how she looks at him. So he doesn't feel like he's being heard or being listened to. But anyway, then Scott goes on to say it was better when she was in prison. Yikes. 
don't know if you should have said that it goes back to what i was saying in the beginning though you see these reassuring conversations like what tracy and clint are having that's exactly what they were doing you're always going to be my baby and i miss you and i love you and this and that and the next thing but when you're out you're dealing with real life you're dealing with actual money you know you are seeing this person you never see these people work but i'm sure they work one way or the other you're probably seeing this person going to work come back being tired this and that you're not working and then you're spending all the money lizzie in another confessional is like in the 10 years that i was in prison i had 23 phones i got twenty three thousand dollars from tricks and then she tells us where she used to keep these phones it's a place where you know the um they don't you know when they frisk people to check them they don't check there mm -hmm. she told us all of that i was like so these people come out of jail she's telling us all all the different tricks all the things that she used to do how she used to fund her drug habit inside the jail which is not allowed but now she's out can you actually be saying this kind of stuff can't you like go back to prison or something is that possible or is there something that stops that from happening so we'll just be doing all kinds of bad stuff in jail and come out and be like oh yeah this is what i did but my jail time is over so Oh well. Moving on to the last couple, y'all. Sarah, Michael, Megan. Megan, Michael, Sarah. Michael, Megan, Sarah. Michael, Sarah, Megan. However you want to say it, however you want to twist it. Megan has been in New York for two days now. This woman is excited. She's going to visit Michael. She's excited to be looking for homes and looking for a job out there because she's going to be with Michael. Then it cuts to Sarah with Emily, her best friend. You know, the chick that you can just phone up, be like, yo, where you at, boo? And go to, just cry your eyes out and tell her all the tea and she's willing to listen and she's on fire for you. And yeah, that's amazing, great friend. Anyway, so she's like, um, the parole officer, the PO, you know, came to get Michael's phone. And it was a female PO officer, so she kind of, you know, she had a bit of maybe sympathy for me. So they kind of told us the deal. It was all kinds of stuff on Michael's phone of Megan. Proof. See those pictures? I told you in the in the last review that I did. All those pictures and things that they were they were taking at Niagara Falls, Megan and Michael, when they went there on their cute little first date or whatever. See where did I go? I knew it. It was on his phone. See, I always think that is so weird. If you're married together, you should be able to go to your, your husband's phone and just be like, you know, oh, just just for no reason. You know, I would, I would be curious to see what kind of pictures are on there. Not like in a dodgy way, like I don't trust you way, but she would have every reason not to trust him anyway because he had left that one time for two days and never said anything, even though he has a baby, uh, baby girl with this woman and is married to this woman. He just left, le bounced. Out of the blue she finds out now that the two days that he was missing he was with megan in a hotel and then the phone rings as she's telling emily all this stuff right emily is flabbergasted the phone rings it is michael first thing she's like yo you gotta set things straight she's talking to michael right now did you go with megan to niagara falls did you sleep with her blah 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 and then she goes to ask, who do you love, me or her? I'm like, but, but why? This question, why? Is it, but why? Is it necessary now? Why would you need to know the answer to that question? He only needs to answer you the facts that you already know to be true because you have seen pictures and videos, right? She's seen explicit <laughs> videos and pictures of Megan. Mm -hmm. So all you need to know is, is that true? You need to hear it from the horse's mouth. You need to hear him say it. You need to hear him confirm it. You need to hear him apologize or find some kind of weird excuse right now. He's just like, why are you asking about that? Why are you asking about that? That's not important. Da -da 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 -da. All this kind of stuff, right? If this was fake information, he would have said, Me Megan, who is that? I don't know Megan, you know? Um, anyway, she's like, well, here's the deal. Um, I have been through a lot and i'm not taking it anymore i'm gonna stop answering your phone calls and um yeah also oh yeah i'm pregnant and um we're getting a divorce but anyway yeah that's it and then she goes into like sob mode which is understandable i mean the woman is 24 like i said the last time this woman is in her mid-20s she should be enjoying life with her nice sweet baby girl look at the life that she's living why emily is just there like hang up the phone 
Hang up the phone, you don't have to speak to him anymore. Just hang up the phone. Hang up the phone. If that were me, hey, my friend, give me that thing. Pew! Off. I will off it like that. Ah, what kind of nonsense is this? So then she goes on to tell Emily, I saw a tablet as well. She saw his tablet. First of all, where is he getting all this stuff? Tablet, nice phone. You know what? All these people, they don't work. Who is providing them with all this stuff? Anyway, so um tablet and she sees some emails and then she figures out that they are engaged and that megan has gone um wedding dress shopping as well <laughs> hey and then sarah's like michael always has a backup plan okay he's with me then he got megan and if things don't work out with megan like it didn't work out with me if he treat her the way he treated me then he will find himself another chick and another chick, and another chick, because Michael always got a backup plan. I don't got a backup plan. That's kind of where Sarah is coming from. And I'm like, yes, my friend, you have a backup plan. It's called what? Freedom. Freedom. You got freedom. And what else? Peace of mind. That should be on a t-shirt. Freedom and peace of mind. My friend, you get that one, you're sorted for life. Who needs uh, all the riches and the fame? All you need is freedom and peace of mind. This woman does not have that. She's about to get it though. She drops this guy. Sarah has got herself thugged out, thugged up, and she's ready to meet Megan. She has cornrows in her hair. And I don't know who did them this quickly, but she knows that Megan is going to, um, she knows that Megan is going to meet Michael in prison. I think it's the PO officer that told her, or something like that. Or at this stage, I actually think that the producers are involved. Because how would she know? How would she know? Okay, anyway, maybe because of the text and stuff, she knows that Megan is there. Probably knows where she's staying. Anyway, she's like, listen, honey, boo boo. She's in my world now. She's in my marriage, okay? And there and then I was like, marriage? Do you still have a marriage? Like, why are you? But I'm like, no. This woman is fighting for her marriage. Like, this woman is acting like a grown woman. She's really fighting for her marriage. But what I don't like then, and this always happens, is that there's a lot of, mm, and if I'm going to fight, if I'm going to get physical with her, that's because I couldn't control myself. And I'm like, even if Michael came to your doorstep today, 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 you would not get physical with him. But you're going to get physical with this other woman who thought that you guys weren't really a thing. But the way she went about it, as in Megan, is not really correct because she knows that they have a kid, which changes a lot. Okay, you're not just free, free, free radicals, you know, <laughs> running about just like that. You have a commitment, you have a child together. So she should have really sussed out what the deal was between um, that whole relationship and that whole dynamic and whether the woman would be okay with that. I mean, you really need to figure that out and you need to meet the woman. I think that would be important because they're still going to have dealings with each other whilst you're having dealings because they have that kid. But anyway, she says that she's irritated with Megan at this point. You see, and then the direction always, f you know, it, it, it refocuses to the other woman and completely not on the man. Because now all her aim was the, the woman, the woman, the woman. Even though she was going to see Michael, it was like, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. I'm going to do this. I'm irritated with him. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, I'm going to meet Megan, rather. And I'm irritated with her. And if things get physical, mm, oh well, I'm irritated, I'm annoyed, I'm angry, I'm this, I'm that. <sighs> Maybe it's a natural thing, but this happens way too often. And at the end of the day, it's Michael who brought another, when they first started off, completely innocent woman into this entire mix and mixed it up and made it a mess. They cut back to Megan, she's in the hotel room. She's like, oh, he likes my ass, I want to make my ass pop. And she's thinking about what I shouted to do, what I look to do, or whatever. She's talking about what shoes to wear, and all this type of stuff. And I'm like, my friend, so you're not actually worried about seeing Sarah and Aviana there, or something like that. And she's like, I know that Sarah and Aviana may come to visit and stuff, but as long as the communication between myself and Michael is good, then you know, then then there are no, there are not going to be any issues. I'm like, what? You mean to tell me? Okay, so then I was like, this is what she means, right? So as long as the two of them, hmm. No, what did she mean? What was the point of that comment? I'm so confused. 
you know that they visit his okay you don't know that's that is the wife supposedly you don't know that's his wife okay you know that the mother of his child comes to visit and the child who don't actually know who you are because you've never actually formally introduced yourself mainly because Michael has never given you a chance but also because you haven't really tried and then so if they come to visit their daddy slash baby daddy in jail that's not gonna be a problem oh no that's actually not what you mean you mean if the communication between you and Michael is good in other words if the two of you <laughs> are able to say oh she's coming today so don't come you know if Michael were able to say something like that and don't come because Sarah and Avian are gonna be here and it's gonna be you don't want that drama so don't come today maybe come a few hours later or come another day blah 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 I think that's pretty much what she meant by that which would also be kind of shady because why wouldn't you want to meet them you should be able to you should want to meet them outside of of the jail Ugh, I don't know Ugh, just my, my head anyway here's one thing that I noticed the producers are instigators tell you they're instigators here Megan is sitting there and the producer is sitting opposite her and he's, she, he's like Sarah wants to meet you do you want to meet her and I'm like okay first of all so where was Sarah going to was she going to the jail or was she going to where she knows that Megan is to just kind of meet her and confront her um, by surprise uh, or do the producers have their hand on this entire situation because obviously it could be that Sarah would come Megan's not there she's gone somewhere or she's gone earlier or whatever you know and they want this to be a good boom like you know meeting or confrontation should I say so I'm very confused by all of that but anyway I think the producers they have their hand in this real, real good real real good um so yeah so then they're like she has and i'm like please don't say no but then i know that she's not going to say no obviously because we've seen many clips of the meeting anyway um then they're like she has info she wants to share with you so that you know the truth and then Megan's like, oh, I'm sorry, I would like to know what's going on so um i kind of felt like how you know how a few uh, episodes ago marcelino finds out that britney um <laughs> had Amanda, you know, her ex-lover in jail, over to their hotel in the bedroom and everything. And he was really upset. And he actually directed all his anger to the producers now. Because he was like, y'all knew about this? Get that camera out of my face. Y'all knew about this. Because it's like they're, they're biting them in the back. These people, as you can imagine, right? Matt has been out of prison for six weeks. So... I think you build up a relationship with these producers and stuff. They're always with you. People are micing you up. They're doing your hair, makeup. This and that and that. They're telling you what's going to happen, where you're going, da, da 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 All this kind of stuff. They would build some kind of relationship. It would be somewhat of a professional relationship, nonetheless, a relationship. So when they figure out that these people are withholding information, but I'm sure they have to, they have to, they have to sign some kind of documents or do whatever, something. I'm sure um, to ensure that yeah. They know that these producers can't actually disclose any information that's gonna change the course of how things would naturally go but yeah so i kind of feel that same kind of way because these producers obviously they know all about this megan sarah michael situation producers are kind of like good pals that are always around you but then you realize that they have ulterior motives because they're here for the views and that money sarah walks in with her cornrows she's ready he's ready for war Sarah walks in and what do we see? What do we see? The credits. Ah, forget it. I don't think we're ever gonna see that confrontation. She comes in, she's like, hello, sits down. Who do you think I am? Megan is like, okay, back up. And Sarah's like, don't talk to me like that. And that's the end of it. That's all we're left with. Who is sorry, not sorry? Is Megan sorry? Not sorry Michael sorry not sorry Lizzie sorry not sorry Got two thousand dollars of fancy boutique wear is Scott sorry not sorry that he wants to leave her is Matt sorry not sorry that he got arrested again and went back to jail 
is Clint sorry not sorry that he kind of broke it off with Tracy is Tracy sorry not sorry that he she kind of pushed him to do so are the producers sorry not sorry for not showing us <laughs> how <laughs> how the confrontation between Megan and Sarah goes I think that's what it is this 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 is the producers apologizing to us this is the producers saying sorry Eh, that's alright though. No. We're getting them views, we're getting that cash, we're getting people, people watching, we're getting people tweeting, we're getting people posting about this stuff. We, we are happy. We could stretch this to 2022 and people would still be watching Love After A Cup Season 2. It's mad. But anyway, I guess you'll see me here again next week with another review slash recap of love after lockup hope you enjoyed this video if you like make sure to subscribe to my channel it's time for life and make sure to make time for glorious life i will see you in the next one now if you haven't already make sure you hit bomb stomp and add on to on that notification bell like boom bam bam click it click it click it so that you get notified about new videos coming out every single week and yeah i would like to see you again soon so join the happy family this is a lifestyle channel y'all so you're gonna see all kinds of things from food to hair to makeup to reviews to chit chats to get ready with me to everything we got it all up on this channel so make sure you subscribe hit the notification bell share comment like and i will see you in the next one make time for life bye mm -hmm.